Hey guys, welcome back for another Wednesday episode. Today I'm going to show you how to wrinkle black your valve cover. So from the factory, the Miatas have this uh, its unpainted valve cover. It's pretty crusty if you've driven your car really any sort of distance. Uh, it likes to retain dirt, oil, and stuff like that. So the quick fix, uh, cheaper than powder coating, is to wrinkle black the valve cover. I've done all sorts of regular spray paint and stuff like that, and it just doesn't hold up as well. Uh, the VHT stuff seems to be made for higher heat. It says 350 on the can. It's a spray-on solution that you just you spray it on over primer, you heat it up, and it wrinkles, and it gives you an almost powder-coated finish at a fraction of the cost. So if you want this kind of finish, like I have on my valve cover from K Miata, but you don't want to pay to have it you know, sent out, stripped, powder-coated, and all that stuff, and you want to do it in your garage in a couple hours, this is the solution. So we're gonna get to it. Uh, we're gonna take it apart. It's my buddy Joe's supercharged Miata that you've seen before. We're just gonna spruce up his engine bay a little bit. So I figured I'd take the opportunity to make a video for you guys. So stick around, we'll get to it and I'll show you how to get some sweet results. The next step here is going to be to disassemble the little things like just take the uh, oil cap off, put that aside. We want to take this out, which is just a rubber gasket, and then these two uh, spark plug wire holders will come out. Uh, it has a Phillips head screwdriver on it, but I would suggest using an 8mm ratcheting wrench to take it out because you're going to just round that out. So we want to reuse these in Joe's case because they help organize the wires. Uh, if you're doing coil on plug or whatever, you can leave them out. but. For Joe's, we want to take them out carefully so we can put them back in. The next step after that, like in any painting process, is going to be the prep clean. So there's all sorts of junk in here. There's some oil on here for me. There's some buildup in the corners here especially back here where like the cam angle sensor sits and all that stuff. It's pretty nasty. If we were to paint it, it would look good for like maybe a week and then the paint would just start to peel right off. So I've got some steps that I'm going to use. The first one is just like a really high strength degreaser and some water outside. So I'm going to let it sit with the degreaser on it for like five minutes, spray it off, probably do that a couple times. And then I have some carbon choke cleaner or brake cleaner, whatever you want to use for like the really hard to get spots that the degreaser doesn't affect. What follows is a brief construction montage. So once you're done spraying it with degreaser, uh, you can bring it inside. I let mine dry outside for like 20 minutes just to get most of the water evaporated. The degreaser did a good enough job in the pockets and all these corners that I don't actually need to use brake clean, which is kind of nice for a change. This is pretty clean to start with. What I did afterwards is kind of wiped it down and uh, emptied out these pockets here with like a shop towel like this just to get the water out. And then I followed it with my heat gun, which uh, luckily when I was done started sparking and smoking. So that's going in the trash. Cleaned it all out, dried everything off. So like all the pockets are dry. You don't want any residual water on this thing because the paint won't stick to that. So make sure it's clean, make sure it's dry, make sure there's no grease anywhere. Like it should be not dusty to your hand or anything like that. The next step is going to be taping. So we're going to tape off the oil fill the breather hose that goes around and I'm just gonna like stuff a rag in here so that no paint gets inside of this port here. Everything else can stay uncovered and if you spray it like this, you know, you're not gonna put it upside down and spray it. You want it to cover the bottom side or anything. It won't get dirty, so. So 
So once you've got it all cleaned and ready and taped off, the next step is going to be priming it. So they sell high heat primer. I haven't used it before for valve covers. They don't get that hot. Uh, the VHT stuff is actually only good to 350 anyways. So this will be fine and it's not going to peel underneath. So what we're going to do here is probably just two coats. Uh, first coat's going to be pretty light and the second coat's going to be a little bit heavier. And that'll just give us a nice surface for the wrinkle black to stick to. And so yeah, we're just going to time lapse through that. I'm going to set this outside, put it in the sun, spray first coat back and forth uh, front to back. And then the second coat is going to be side to side just to make sure that we get all the crevices and everything filled in. So once you've sprayed the primer on and you've got it all coated, the next step is going to be your Wrinkle Plus. Uh, this is VHT Wrinkle Plus. I don't know if there's other companies that make this stuff. I've always just used this. You can find it at Advanced, AutoZone, I think really any car parts store. It's easy to use if you follow the directions. So they're right here. It's like note three on the back. Uh, you got to shake it pretty vigorously for a while and then you want to do three heavy coats. So the first one, like we did earlier, is going to be a left to right coat. The second one is going to be an up and down coat. And then the third one, you're going to want to go diagonal across the valve cover. So you make sure you get every angle and every nook and cranny on the part. And you want to make it thick enough that it almost runs, but it doesn't run. If it runs, you'll get weird lines in your wrinkle. It's uncomfortable amounts of paint. If you're used to using spray cans and stuff like that, you want to go heavy every coat no light first coat no nothing every single coat needs to be heavy so this is the stuff read the directions a couple times before you use it and just be ready to do you know first coat wait a couple minutes just for it to dry up i believe it's like five three to five minutes and then do the second coat and then do the third coat again and once you're done with that we'll get on to using the heat gun to actually make it wrinkle faster than just letting it sit on the side of your bench Once you've done your third coat, the next step is going to be uh, the heat gun in this case. You can let it sit for two hours and they say that you'll get similar results and I think full cure in 24. I'm impatient and you get really good results with the heat gun. So I'm gonna show you that. It takes some time. You gotta get the whole thing really hot. So you'll just do even passes over the whole thing and you'll start to see it kind of wrinkle in. And then once you get a spot going, you can just work from there and really pull it across and it's really satisfying to watch. So we're gonna do that.
that's all it is. You can see the pull through once it starts to go. And really, if you think about it as you're heating the metal up underneath and you want to just get an even coat over everything, that's the best way to do it. Don't just focus on one spot when you're trying to heat the whole thing up. And then once it gets to whatever that temperature is, it all starts to flake uh, and it looks really cool. And this is one of the best results I think I've ever got. So here's some close-up shots of it. You can see the wrinkled finish. It is extremely hot at this point, the whole thing. So like, I'm not gonna try to take the, the tape off of this little bung over here. Overall, the finish is really good. I'm actually pretty proud of this one. Uh, I'm not going to, you can see on Dylan's car, we filled in the lettering. I asked Joe and thankfully he doesn't want that done. It's a pain with the wrinkle because the paint will climb out of the, the lettering and you'll have this like splotchy paint around there. So we're gonna leave this as is. I would suggest letting it dry for, I don't know, up to 24 hours before you install it. Uh, I've put them on in a couple hours once they cool down and I've had okay results, but sometimes the, the bolts will flake off the paint right around the bolt holes. So if you just wait, uh, you'll have better results. I'm gonna leave this up on the counter for the night and let it cool off. And then we'll throw it on the car tomorrow. One eternity later. So the valve cover's dry. Uh, to the touch and everything it won't chip now on me at least not too easily so the next step as you can see I put the uh, filter back on here oil cap and then I went ahead and repainted these because why not so this, this is just a rust-oleum gloss black I hit the screws so that they're all nice and clean uh, the next step is gonna be to flip it over and put the new valve cover gasket in and then we'll just throw it on the car so pretty simple from this point on I'm just gonna time-lapse you through the rest of it um, yeah, this came out really good, so it should look good on the car. There you have it, easy as that, and looks pretty good in my opinion. Uh, I took one can of VHT, actually a little bit less than, and one can of primer. So don't go out buying tons of cans of primer and, and paint and stuff like that. Really simple for a job like this. There's actually probably still half of that can left if I had to look. Uh, it's all dry, it's all good, it's ready to run. I RTV'd the corners of the valve cover gasket, so I am gonna let this sit for a couple hours. Uh, I used Honda Bond, which is like concrete, so in a couple hours, this will be good to drive, and Joe will be ready to uh, rip around and pop his hood at Cars and Coffee or wherever he goes. So, super easy weekend project, and really kind of revitalizes the engine bay. So, if you like this kind of stuff, uh, I got some more stuff planned for you on Wednesdays, and stick around. Hit that like button if you like this video. Subscribe if you want to see more, and comment your thoughts down below, and I will reply to each and every one of you. So... Thank you. I will see you next Wednesday and have a good one.